We have a motion to authorize the President of the Council to execute an agreement to purchase the property at 216 Darby slash Fire Hill Road, a.k.a. Uh, lot block 255-N-233 in as in con condition for present and future public purposes under a general warranty deed for a price not to exceed $100,000 plus incidental costs subject to an appraisal confirming the value of the price and with the other customary terms <coughs> and If anybody wants to know where lot block 255-N-233 is next door. Yes. There's a motion. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Bruce, not second. And Bill Henderson. All those in favor? Uh, uh, sorry, now we're not. You have the authority to say. Yes. There's an offer, and we have the first one. <laughs> It's on, the, it's, it's on the Allegheny County Bear site at 85. All right, committee reports. Bruce? I have no reports, sir. Uh, finance. You know. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, the general funding is $1,036,759.81. Sewer funding. Four hundred and four thousand four hundred and eighty three point seventy five dollar dollars. Garbage fund twenty thousand six hundred fifty two dollars and thirty four cents. Capital improvement twenty five thousand hundred and eleven dollar and ninety six cents. Link of fuel hundred eighty four thousand. Eight hundred and sixty-seven dollars and sixty-five cents. We receive a check normally when we used to attend the convention in Seven Spring. They uh, they give us the check. I was a delegate of for many many years. MRM. What MRM is? It's a municipal grant. Bunch of uh, us municipality. We got together, and I remember in the middle lady, the man come right in next door over there to collect the municipality to congregate the, the insurance. We have our own insurance for this. Instead of the company to, to have the dividend, the dividend to go to us, to all the municipality, according to the uh, the amount and so forth. We've been paying the uh, the premium quite a few years from the from this. The worker compensation as well, it depends how many cases we have every year. But anyway, we got $23,438.69 from worker comp. That's back to us. And we got property locally trust Dividend received thirty-seven thousand six hundred fifty-seven dollars and seventy-nine cents. The amount of sixty-one thousand and ninety-six dollars and forty-eight cents. And I was very happy in the middle lady to be one of my votes to agree on this. So as you know, I've been going a long time ago. So this was a good thing. And and we have millions and millions of dollars in uh, in uh, Astro, it's a big, big company. Uh, it's all of us, we spend quite a few. And if you have a lot, of, the only risk is just like so getting out of insurance. If you have a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, problem, and then they just throw you out. Yeah, every insurance does that. Oh, there is your premium, obvious. Give us money. But anyway, we should be proud. More municipalities should join this. That's an excellent thing for you. But thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> thank you. Uh, Parks and Recreation, Jason. Well, parks are in full swing right now. I mean, baseball, soccer, and everything else is going on. Parks are good for the grass. Lights are all fixed. Lights are all fixed. Asking bowls down there in the asphalt. Come along with it. Any consideration? Any 
Hey, I know if you hear that. So what you're talking what you're talking about is now that the chargers the McLaughlin Park, the tennis courts weren't being used and they're gonna make it into a little hockey area for the kids. That is the that is the official home ice the uh, Lumberjack Mafia, is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the reigning champions of the Chargers Valley uh, Street Hockey League. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the guys get it together and they'll be ready. Cool. All right. Uh, public Parks, Bill, Lucy. Well, they got the parks looking good. Everything looks good off Front Street. So they're doing their job. All right. Sounds good. Uh, public safety, Bill Henderson. Um, just based on some of the comments tonight, I think we'll, we'll get a uh, public safety meeting scheduled for this next month. Mm -hmm. It's got so many issues that you guys have raised. And then uh, I defer to the chief for his, uh, his report for public safety. Uh, okay. uh, Mr. Mayor. It is my distinct honor to proclaim May 20th as Amy Perkins Day. Amy will be turning 100 has been a lifelong resident of Bridgeville and a wonderful asset to our community. So it is just one of the great things that, uh, that we have here. And I'm very honored to proclaim May 20th, 2015 as Amy Perkins. Um, with regards to Bower Hill Road, I did not think that the issue would come as quickly as it has as to you know, needing to do something about it. We have over the last months talked about, gee, it really should be pen dots. It really should not be Bridgeville's road. Because the road is a regional arterial roadway that is used by the region. But we are, how do we get it to be how do we get PennDOT to take it over? How do we give it back to them? How do we give it back to them? And my thought, and I have not discussed this with any of you, but my thought is that this would be an opportune moment for council, for someone on council, to make a motion to resolve that Bridgeville Borough turn Bower Hill Road over to the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation. I don't see any downside to making such a motion. And it puts it, and it puts it very square that that's what the opinion of council is. Right. Right. So, just, just so that we know, it's is a com, common road right now. It's, it's not a state. It's not a state, right? I'm so we're asking the state to take the common road. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'll make the motion. He has a motion to the second. Any discussion? Tom, is it something that yeah, has to be sure. I think it's kind of a sensitive council motion that I interpret it as you all making a resolution to ask us to look into uh, what can we do to work. Yeah, I think that's what's our ability and how do we go about if we can divesting ourselves of future responsibility for Barrow Road? Can you summarize the fuss sense to do so? Can you summarize the fuss about Bower Road? Because I'm not up to speed on it. Bower Hill's broken up. New asphalt. We need some new asphalt, new paving. But Bower Hill Road is primarily a regional arterial roadway. And we're hoping that maybe PennDOT will take it over. As opposed to the residents of Bridgeville having to pay the costs. But what happened several years ago, the county went around and asked municipalities to take over maintenance of it. But it wasn't disclosed as the depth of the maintenance of it. And um, it was basically calling it in the wintertime, making sure it was taken care of it. Well, it's got way out of hand. And we've tried in the past to get the county Tell them you take care of it. It's not ours anymore, and uh, that's what they're referring to is to, to try to give our roads back to you. Pat's asking for pen talk, but uh, we'll see what happens. 
I think Papen should know that's not in entire body of room. That's right. from PJ to up here. Yeah, right. That's from, yes. Yeah. We always took care of that in the failures. At one point in time, they say, look, take this room. And sometimes we make mistakes, sometimes we don't. It's a me, many years. When I say we, the quarter of other government they've been here. So we all in the same boat. And the other side say. is is we used to take care of the salt and that on the other side right. down right. to the to the borough's land. And then they discontinued that. This um, we we were paid a stipend just as we are for Pendle Rose to take care of from the block line to the Richville Borough line going toward up to St. Clair. And the county discontinued that. So now they maintain that to McLaughlin Road. And then we maintain from McLaughlin to Bowen Hill. The issue that we have with that is that we, of course, get to things quicker than they do. But we call them and they, they get there. So, um, but, um, yeah, I mean, if we can look into yeah, well, there's a, there's, there's a there's that would be there's a motion. Motion. So, um, and there's many times when uh, Bar Hill wrote they don't get over here so soon enough. Oh. But we are public court. We make sure that our residents oh. we oh. issue is it's a hard issue. It's the roadbed. It's a roadbed. It's We'll plow it for free. Yeah. 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 Take a bet. Right. All right, here's a motion. So, yeah. well, Bar Hill was stable before they dug at Trinside. Because when Warren was here, he had machines in there and he undermined everything. That's why we're having all these problems. Now, I'm telling you right now, I watched it. It's not right. Give it back. You can't. You're, you couldn't afford well, fixing that place. Well, again, it's not as. I mean, I'm sure it's not as easy to say here at yours, but uh, that's, we'll, we'll see what we put together. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Pat. Thank you. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's all. Huh? Uh, Police Chief, Chad King. Thank you, Council President. I don't have much other than I have word from my secretary today that uh, Swank Construction contacted us to make us aware that sometime around May 27th there's going to be road construction on Washington Avenue from St. Clair Street to Chartier Street. Um, I don't know what times yet, and I don't know the duration or lane restrictions, but once that's learned, we'll post it on our Facebook page. It's going to be nighttime work. It is? Um, okay. When they contacted me last year to let us know okay. that that portion of the roadway was going to be paved, um, there, it's impossible for them to do that um, during the day. So just as the other, when the other portion was paved to the northern end, it will be done at night. And that will also include the new striping that we had incorporated from our uh, meetings with Kenda down at Hickman Street. And uh, there's the, the double lanes, the turn lane down there. So, but it will be at night. It will be a little inconvenience to the residents that have apartments there, but they'll get through there pretty quick doing the work at night. Did they give an estimate for the duration of the project? No, they haven't. Okay. Um, they haven't let us know yet that they're coming, so I would guess that we should know pretty quick as far as what they think, and I'll let you know. He estimated today around the 27th, so. Okay. Like I said, as we learn more, we'll post it to our Facebook page. Okay. 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 That's it? Just thank you. Just a word. Oh. Okay. The Facebook page is great. I mean, you're getting information out to the community. If you haven't seen it, I'd, I'd urge you to. If you're on Facebook, to uh, friend of the police department. Because that reminds me, did you find the owner of the bunny? <laughs> no, no one came forward. But it's, uh, we believe it's been adopted to a safe home by this point. Tom Hawson Cuffer. Did you see bunny? Uh, nice job. Um, solicitor, Tom Sherman. I thank you, Mr. President. Again, my regular report, just a couple of notes on the zoning ordinance. Um, uh, review. Uh, we have the uh, agreement with EPD executed in April. We have a scheduled timeline uh, tentative to put together. I think it's going to be circulated this 
week that puts us on a four to five month schedule, which is consistent and pretty impressive and consistent with what we had anticipated. It's a good schedule. And we are scheduled actually to meet with the Planning Commission for the first time to give them an overview and kind of get the ball rolling at that level uh, on May 18th. And um, uh, in addition, had the opportunity this month to assist uh, to uh, Chilio Fire Department with their um, the loan documentation for their aerial truck and also to have put together a social media policy for them. Uh, Joe Sites, the engineer, the manager, and I continue to uh, uh, follow closely the um, uh, consent decree issues regarding the sanitary sewers, uh, following up on the extensions that were granted at the end of March, uh, conditioned by, by um, ACHD, and the follow-up letter that was issued by the DEP, and we are uh, in the process of trying to define uh, what the significance of those two are letters will be for us in the combination as are all the other communities so it's kind of stay tuned right now we'll have a better idea next month um, of where uh, things are going to go on in the next round so that's, and that's all I have to report thank you, thank you Tom all right engineer Chris Sites thank you Mr. Chairman quite a few things here the uh, 2015 paid maintenance program uh, the contracts have been sent to uh, the grant of execution. Once they're returned, they'll get them signed by uh, the borough here to get a pre-construction meeting. Uh, Pennsylvania American Water has to do the trench restoration before we can do any work. Uh, we're still working on uh, cleaning up some loose ends of the 2014 sanitary sewer CCTV inspection and cleaning of the jet deck. Once that sport's completed, uh, we can uh, finalize the project. Uh, 2015 sanitary sewer repairs, operation and maintenance. Uh, Soil light construction has been working the last two weeks with the repairs, and they're about 40% complete. I would expect them to be done uh, probably early June. Um, with that work, that works moving along at a uh, very uh, nice pace uh, without any issues. Uh, the contracts with sanitary sewer lining contract with JetJack uh, are in the process of being executed. Once they're executed, we'll have a pre construction meeting. As well as the 2015 sanitary sewer CCTV inspection and cleaning. Uh, those contracts have, uh, are in the process of being executed with Inside Pipe. Uh, that will uh, take care of our year five of the operation and maintenance related to the consent order. The ADA door openers here at the municipal building, so we have handicap accessibility here to the front doors. Uh, Shore West Club made the motion to award the contract automated entrance systems in the amount of $11,170. I believe all that funding is coming from the Charlotte's call for that project. There's no uh, funds uh, from the borough related to that project. So you can walk around park growing greener phase two grant application. We submitted a grant application estimated at a cost of $488,510, which is a 50% match. And that's uh, to uh, give us a new parking lot down there in the Guapo Park, uh, five pole pavilions, drinking fountains and some additional skate park equipment uh, down there to uh, enhance the uh, park. Okay. Sure, go ahead. As a note, um, we had a uh, phase two plan on the, the park, which is 10 years old. This is a last year that we can use that plan, so that's why we will fine. And then the uh, Chartier Street, Washington Avenue, Chartier Street Bridge intersection, uh, We've worked with PennDOT on scheduling a meeting in June to review all the information submitted, including refined cost estimates, plans, and applications for funding. We recently submitted a CITF gaming fund grant uh, for the uh, portion to widen uh, that section of Chartier Street between uh, the intersection and the, uh, and the, the water, water avenue. Right. Mm -hmm. so, well, yeah, the busy. Thank you very much, Joe. Uh, Chief Chilio. Thanks, Mr. President. Where's our fire truck? <laughs> they got pictures. I know. <laughs> um, the stolen site will be going up for June 4th right now for final inspection, so look like it should be here for community day for everybody to see on that. Uh, I would like to, from the fire department, thank everybody in attendance to the cash bash. We had 490 people in the door. Missed, missed my goal by 10. <laughs> uh, did very well. It was a good night. Everybody had a really good time that night. And thanks again to the chief for letting us have an officer. 
Um, one thing I do want to elaborate a little bit tonight on, and I'm sure people in the town have seen the WTA news segments and all that. Uh, we were not brought up in any of that, which is fine. We don't have any real issues down in our fire department to let our residents know, but just a little education. What do our guys, our people do down in Bridgeville? You know, we, when you come in, you have to go through a class to become a firefighter. It takes 188 hours out of your life to get done, to become a firefighter. On top of doing that, you answer fire calls. You come work to bingo for five, six hours a night, every week. Uh, we do the cash bash. We do fish fries. Plus, every Thursday is either a meeting or a drill down our fire department. The people down there put a very, very lot of time in and dedication. Are our numbers down? Yes. You know, we're not like we used to be years ago with the number of people in there. Um, we do very well. We hold our own with our numbers. Our run times are within the limits that are needed. You know, we're. We're here for the town, we're there. I mean, we want to see up there and out here see us there. So, as the chief, you know, we have a good bunch of people down there that are very dedicated this time to make sure that those pieces are out within a decent amount of time. Do we take longer than others? Yes. Because, depending on the call severity, is how we respond. And I'll use an example. If you have a CO alarm going off in your house and nobody's sick or anything like that, well, we don't rush to get down the station. There's not a life-threatening situation there. So we don't want the people getting an accident going down the station. We don't want them getting an accident with the truck compared to having a house burning with somebody in it. Two different categories. So call like that, yes, our response times will take a little longer because the people are just taking their time getting down there and using our head. That's probably the best way to say it. Um, but when there is something bad, we're there, and we're there really quick. Last week we had a possible apartment fire for Grandview Tires, and the equipment was out in a very decent time for that. That was during the day. Um, one thing we're very fortunate of down the fire department is, I have a lot of people that work shifts. So we always have some people always around. So is a confidence. <laughs> Mr. Miller here next to me, if some of my members belong to work actually with him, or it's their full-time job. So when they're not with him, they're with me. So it works hand in hand, but I have a lot of shift work. We average, probably for a call, I'm gonna say about seven, eight people on a call. That's an average. Some calls are down, some calls are higher. So that's the purpose of an average. But I just want to kind of little reiterate what we do down the fire department, the time we put in. You know, the people put in a lot of time in one week down there to protect this town and what we do. And to work to get the equipment on top of the borough helping us and working with us. You know, they're very helpful and uh, And that's one of the reasons why we're getting a new fire truck with the help of the borough. You know, that truck just to let everybody know, it's costing a million dollars to come in to protect this town. So, you know, but I just want to iterate a little bit about that with what's been going on on WTAE. You know, I did not get no phone calls to speak and that and I would not with what's going on because they do not have their facts right. It's a good article. Yes, our numbers are down as far as volunteers, but I feel, me as a chief, they don't get their facts right because does it take us longer to get to the fire station? Yeah, if it's rush hour, don't matter where you're at, traffic's a mess. If it's in climate weather for snow, they're not going to rush to get down here. So, those are some of the things to take in consideration, you know, with that. So, but just to let everybody know, I just want to kind of touch base on that and if anybody has any questions. I'm glad to help them out after the meeting. Okay. Um, to you guys up there, did I miss anything? Yeah, I work a lot with you guys up there hand in hand. Absolutely. Your response time is very good.
question was. Yeah, I, I think it's a good time for me to discuss a compliment. About a month ago, there was a waterline the person in the Bridge Towers condominium set off the alarm, and 100 older people had to walk down the street, the elevator shut down, 100 people had to walk down the uh, stairways to get to the floor. The, the bells were deafening. Everybody was standing around with their hands over their ears. There was general panic. Uh, five minutes after 911 was called, Bill showed up with one of the police officers, analyzed the problem, solved it in five minutes, and uh, averted a good number of a serious situation. Excuse me, just one thing. Thanks, Bob, on that. On top of what I just said, what we do with all our time, I didn't give the major part. Our fire department in Birdsville averages between 200 and 250 fire calls a year. So on top of doing all the training and everything else and the fundraising all year long, we handle between 200 and 250 fire calls for a 1.1 square mile town. So that's a lot. So thank you. Thank you again, Bob. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Southbridge, St. Lawrence. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I have provided statistics to the board. Um, but also wanted to bring up on April 24th, last month, a uh, representative from the Pennsylvania Emergency Health Services Council, who also represents the Pennsylvania Department of Health, um, gave Southbridge recognition for advanced pediatric standards. Um, basically, Southbridge has exceeded the basic bar set by the state, and we've hit the highest level they've set for pediatric standards. What that basically means is we have additional equipment than required. Uh, we do background checks that are in addition to what are required by the state. Um, we do training in house for, uh, four hours every year for all our people. And we also do community outreach on the basis of pediatric, like pediatric CPR classes like Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, and things in community day. So, um, it's kind of neat to, to get that. So your ambulance is riding around and see a sticker on the side of our truck that says that we should get the last Excellent. Thank you. Congratulations. Uh, library, Ms. Whitman. Hi. I'm here tonight just to say we have our third annual Taste of the Town at the Bridgeville Fire Hall. And we had a wonderful evening. And thanks to Ray, he did a wonderful job. He's getting better. <laughs> And better and better. It's great. Um, we had a lot of fun. The organization was good. The participants in the community, the restaurants, was absolutely wonderful. Um, and one of the things that I would like to ask is, I would like to have a meet and greet with the borough council representation, and I'd like to know who I could speak with to set that up, so that I could have a very good attendance. I'd like you to meet some of our library personnel. Look at some of the technology in the library. You've been really helpful in supporting the library, even more so um, this last time. And who could I work with to get that set up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was quick. <laughs> yeah, fine. Like, yeah. And how do I reach you? Because I have used your email, but I didn't get a response. I'll, I'll, the council email, is that not a good place to go? I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll give you my email address. <laughs> okay. Um, catch me after the meeting. Okay, that would right. be great. Right. But thank you to Bridgeville. It was wonderful. Or I'll catch you when you're walking. A nice evening and some <laughs> good Beatle music. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Borough Manager. Um, I provided a report for the meeting. Anything or anything? Um, one of the things that I did want to mention was I know that the weather outside is 90 degrees, and we're already looking at a 2015 rocks off of it. And it's in the process of being prepared by the Shea Cog, of which we, we um, utilize there um, and join in with the other municipalities in the Shea Cog each year. The new good documents have changed a little bit. They're including a line item for a pre winter fill. And what this is, is this is so that when it starts to get bad and everybody starts to call and then we have delayed in delivery, that if there's a pre-winter fill that we can take some salt ahead of time and store it, that we would get a discounted price. So that's going to be part of the new bid 
we're not sure how that's going to work out. I have to provide uh, um, uh, estimates as far as what we could take, which right now we're holding about 200, so we could take 250 more. And that would have to be taken between August 1st and uh, August 31st. And then again, that would be at a, dis at a discount price. I've also increased our estimated tonnage from 750 tons to 900. We're required to purchase 80% of that, but if our winners continue like this, we need that. Um, and we can purchase up to 125% at the same price without going over and we, after you go over 125, then the price increases. So there's a little change in that in the way that they're doing the goods this year, but um, it may be beneficial, we'll see. Uh, but they did not want to continue on to the, to the next, sometimes we can take an option year waiting on for that. So that information has already been um, submitted to the shape of. Um, also, um, I'd like to meet with the administrative committee. We did place, um, I think everybody saw in the newsletters, we did place the two designs for the signs um, to get some input from the community as well as the business owners. So and it's been on for a week. We're hoping to get a little more input from the Western Union Administrative Committee and then maybe make a recommendation on the uh, design so that we can move forward with construction documents and then start to apply for some grants um, to get out and uh, try to get started on those. Is there a one going more than the other? No, they're even. Really? Because what's happening is some of the people that like the red are saying, I like the red, but I can read the white right better. They're, they're more, they're it's more of a color design. So, um, so we'd like to get, get together with that so we can get moving on that. And the last thing that I have is I got a, a letter from my Sylvester Computer Township questioning the borough's interest in participating in a new regional transportation direct, uh, district study. And we should we wish to participate, um, we're going to set up a meeting. I would let um, the individuals know that we were participating. In their letter, they stated that they are requesting financial assistance also. So that, that is to be noted that um, they got this right in the Are they aware that what we're... That I'm we're not sure. So that's why yeah. they said if, if we were interested in, in talking about right. it, they would meet with us. And I think that we have to get together with them so they know what we're doing mm -hmm. also. So um, as long as I have um, council so to go ahead and move and then any, anything else you have questions about the right here? Thank you. Uh, old business. A couple, couple of real quick. Do you know how much salt did we use last year? Uh, we, um, we used um, 1,125 tons. Okay. So you're looking at 950. Okay, so that puts you with the one. So it's, you know, it's kind of, sometimes, you know, we've had winners where we use practically nothing. Mm -hmm. And then we've had winners where we, you know, it was ridiculous. So it, it's kind of a guessing game, but we have never, we have never um, estimated more than 750. Mm -hmm. So I bought to them pretty, pretty aggressively, so hopefully. Right. One of the things with, again, percolated for the last year, is talking to other municipalities about using the blind. The blind, yes. And I can't remember what the end up program is where we can the swap services. The the agility program. I talked to Dean Schmidt um, mm -hmm. and a little bit about the agility program mm -hmm. and what we can do and what we tell them. So we can look more into that. Yeah, I think Calendar would be good for Calendar to maybe take a look at that, uh, especially. With with regards to the concept of maybe moving some of the bond, you know, a number of municipalities have mm -hmm. seen positive things. Like There's a lot of uh, bond municipalities that have done some bond. Well, Mark, we, we actually don't. I had an opportunity to actually help in the acquisition of the equipment that have been out there with the program you got to be a good person to talk to the bond program manager. Just on the numbers of the map, and incredible just how quickly it actually is able to pay for itself because of the efficiency. It's you know, you're not name for the roads, it's more surgical than the system. And actually, I have to talk to another fellow out there in a second. 
class fellowship and it's some of our DPW guys here that went forward there for the people that have to go through the materials. They actually built their own system. Yeah, I mean, we have a little bit of a stand down here. Yeah, it's kind of low tech, and a couple of municipalities have actually have folks out here with all basically built their own. Not bad to tell me and call the media that they would be more than glad to come here and use the machine. Yeah, we've already yeah. 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 that's right. Uh, because at the call, we discussed it that practically, especially when every meeting. So maybe we should have an Ortsfair to come over here. They said nothing. 
after about five minutes of searching the records. And I called the Army Corps of Engineers and asked them the same thing. They told me they likewise had no record of it. And he mentioned something about, uh, this is Pittsburgh, the uh, Army Corps, I mentioned something about there, some of the records were destroyed in the fire. Maybe that was where it would be from it. So the information that I had was through phone call surveys and, uh, and, and one -on one surveys. Excuse me. You know, no, no, I've been here a long, long time. And my mind is still clear. If you were to call me instead of Harrisburg, I could answer you that question. You go to Mark Mahal and he'll show it to you. See, Mahal, you know what? Oh, call Lori. We have a file. Excuse me. I exercised all of those options to the best of my ability. Matter of fact, uh, several months ago, or last year, when we found out about the culvert, we, I went to Mahal. He said that he was going to find the permits and then forward them to me. He just uh, last week, when we ran into each other at Berkeley, he told me that he dropped them off at the fair home six months ago. I never even knew it. I heard nothing about it. But anyway, the point was the DEP engineer from Harrisburg and uh, another uh, hydraulics engineer that had a meeting here about two months ago both verified that the culvert is inadequate. However, whether it was legally permitted or whatever, it's inadequate. It's causing the flooding of Baldwin Street. And, and uh, there's some mathematics back that up, right? And, and anyway, I, I don't mean to contradict you in a hostile manner, but uh, the facts no, that okay. I've okay. the researched, they told me what I put down. Can I just well, make a note? Yes, sir. I, you know, well, after our one flood, we had, uh, I had a call from Chris Crowley at the local office, and he found the permit for this call to that. Well, that's, that's, said, that's great. said that the DEP did issue the permit, that was just a matter of Mr. Mahaley had to transfer the name of it from himself to Bridgeville Borough. No, that's so fine. that's what he needs to do. No, that's fine. I'm not, so again, I'm not, trying, to, it wasn't I'm not trying to put the bill down on Borough Council. The, the point is, the information that I got, both sources of information, the DEP and Army Corps, told me the records. They had no record of that. All right? Thank you, Carl. Sure. Uh, any other new business? What are we going to do with them walls that are falling in the wall of the street? How did the garage fall in there quick? Can we get in there? The one garage, there's two garages that fell in the creek. The one garage the property owner is going to take that out. The other the other garage, we've got to take a look at actually our building inspectors are going to go down and take a look at that and um, give the property owner some ideas on how to get to get that out. So, um, they're addressing it right now. Um, our public works department may be able to go in on an emergency basis. Yeah, how can you get that free out there so that it doesn't go down and work out? Because you're going to ask quick to tear it out. Yeah, and we can just say it's an emergency because it fell to the So we're aware of them and uh, we've already talked to them in the property. Okay. Motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye